So this is uh, this is the sacred area here. Uh, native healers, local and Russell Willier from Alberta have come here and they describe this as a very powerful place. The uh, big rock up here has the mouse, uh, mouse woman carved on it. We'll go up closer so you can see it. Over here to the left there are burial caves and the burial caves are old, maybe around 5,000 years old. The mouse woman is not that old, uh, maybe one or two hundred years old, we don't know for sure. Uh, okay, this is the mouse woman here. As you perhaps can see, she has her right hand up. And this, I think, maybe has two meanings. One is to stop. She is a guardian of the site. And I think also might mean welcome. Uh, before we go any further, we have brought a little bit of food for the mouse woman as an offering. And we are asking permission to visit this site and we will be respectful uh, with what we do here. And we hope the film resulting here from here will be useful in classrooms uh, across Canada. So I'll leave the food, leave the food over here on the side. Maybe put it right in there. Okay. So the mouse woman is a grandmother spirit, which is found uh, among coastal peoples. The grandmother is responsible for the welfare of young people, particularly correcting injustices that have been done to, to young people. And the reason we feel it is a mouse represents a mouse is because of the ears and a little bit hard to see but there are whiskers here and uh, again hard to see but there's a vagina here representing a woman so we know it's a female figure. There are many stories about the mouse woman uh, but she is not represented very often graphically so this is unusual. The other unusual thing about this petroglyph is that it is upright, it is vertical. Most of the petroglyphs on Gabriella are horizontal, they're on the ground. So this, in fact, this is an upright position and more or less uh, life size, uh, size of a human being, uh, I think adds to its power. Um, various healers have come here, as I mentioned. Russell Willier from Alberta has come and brought people from Alberta for healing. What typically happens is that Russell will offer tobacco in the Cree style and then we'll make a prayer and then the patients will come and lean up against the mouse woman and uh, say their own prayers and ask for healing and typically a patient will say that they feel uh, energy coming from the rock. And sometimes healing is immediate. Sometimes it takes a uh, it takes a few days or a couple of weeks. I'd like to tell you just a bit about the visit of Russell Willier, the Cree healer, to this site. Uh, a few years ago, he hit a moose in Alberta when he was in his truck and severely damaged his knee, and he never recovered from it. So when he came to our house. Uh, we live up on the second floor and he had trouble climbing the stairs. He came down here to the mouse woman and offered tobacco and prayed, leaned up against the mouse woman 
and uh, was cured instantly of his knee problem. When he came back to our house, he ran up the stairs without any problem and uh, has been well ever since. It's, that's about three years ago. Uh, he was so impressed that he brought his brother and his brother's son out here. His brother, brother's son had a very severe case of arthritis, so bad that he couldn't hold a job. He couldn't get married. And uh, so they did the ritual. His nephew leaned up against the rock and was cured of his uh, arthritis and uh, went back home and is still fine and now has a good job. And uh, those are examples of what we call spontaneous healing, healing which uh, occurs very uh, quickly. And uh, this is the uh, topic that I am explored in the book called uh, The Mouse Woman of Gabriola. In the book I examined different possible explanations of how that could occur. The other interesting thing I'd like to relate is when, the, when Russell was standing here in front of the mouse woman praying, uh, Arbutus leaf came down and uh, fell. And he also noticed that the Arbutus, when they have scars, uh, the, they heal over very quickly. And so he took that as a sign from the spirits that the Arbutus should be added to his medicine bundle. And this is this is interesting example of how a healer can acquire new knowledge from uh, neighboring groups. So he took uh, a lot of arbutus bark back with him and uh, meditated. Well, he tried it first. He thought he knew how to use it and wasn't having too much luck with it. So he fasted and prayed, and the spirits came and told him he was using it in the wrong combination, in the wrong recipe. So he modified his recipe and then started to have very good results from it and has been using it ever since. Uh, there's one woman I interviewed in Alberta a couple of years ago that, he treat, she, that Russell had treated. She uh, had been a heavy drinker all her life and her liver was about gone and the doctors at the hospital told her that no use continuing to treat her because she was going to die very quickly, very soon. So in desperation, she called Russell and he used this combination with the Arbutus bark in it. And after a month of treatment, uh, she was well again. Her, her liver was back to normal. And the doctors were quite surprised at that. So uh, periodically, I gather some uh, Arbutus bark and send it to, to Russell uh, for use in his medicines. All right, I think that's uh, the, that's all I have to say. I'll show you some other uh, petroglyphs, pet, petroglyphs up here, but everyone agrees that this seems to be the most powerful one. Okay, thank you. So here we have a very large uh, petroglyph. We're not sure what these depict, but I, it looks to me like you have an eagle uh, chasing a wolf. And uh, there's an interesting Haida story in which the mouse woman, which is just down the slope from here, and the eagle and the wolf all appear in the same story. Uh, I'll relate that story briefly to you. I don't know, of course, whether these petroglyphs are depicting that story or not, but uh, it's an interesting story nevertheless. In the story, there was a Haida, young Haida prince who fell in love with a beautiful Haida princess, and he proposed to her. And I, I don't remember all the details of the story. I, I, I hope I have it correct. But uh, she scorned him, laughed at him, and said she might consider his proposal if he cut off all his hair. So he did that and came back, and she laughed at him again and said, well, maybe if you scar your face, I will consider it. He did that and came back and she laughed at him again. So he was very distraught and went into the forest and sat on a log and the mouse woman came out and listened to his story. And she said, I'm going to heal your face and make you more beautiful than ever, make you so beautiful that the princess 
will change her mind. So she did that, and he went back, and the princess did change her mind, but then the prince uh, laughed at her this time, and she was very distraught and went into the forest and uh, met the same mouse woman, and the mouse woman took revenge on her and had her killed. So this is a story with a sad ending. Uh, but it, it is an interesting story, and it's maybe, maybe these uh, petroglyphs, uh, part of their function perhaps was to uh, preserve these ancient oral tradition, these stories, we don't know. Uh, the mouse woman apparently had healing functions. People who have visited here don't feel the same healing power from this rock, which is interesting. So they're not all the same. Okay. Well, in the story I just told you the, about the Haida prince and princess, one of them belonged to the eagle clan and one belonged to the wolf clan. Uh, which is why I think it's possible that uh, this is that refers to that story, especially since the mouse woman is just down the slope. If you look at the eagle, it has the distinctive beak of an eagle. This here is interesting. The wolf, they've, uh, if, if it is a wolf, they made use of the natural indentation in the rock uh, to show the mouth. Here are the teeth, here. Uh, here is a good example of the Arbutus tree that Russell has added to his medicine bundle. And uh, this is a piece of bark from the tree, and uh, which I box, uh, box up and send to him occasionally for, for use in his medicines.